Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Joyce Sullivan, and I'm here with Linda Descano. Linda Descano. So um, uh, it's a delight to be here on the 140 conference, especially here at 92nd Street Y, and to all our friends in the audience. And uh, I'd like to say a special shout out to the folks around the world. I understand we are uh, being recorded, or we're live, actually. And thank you for spending your afternoon and evenings with us. To those those of you checking us out over our live streaming. Yep, great. So Linda, let's talk a little bit about you and what it is you're doing um, at City these days. So at um, Citibank, I lead our digital partnerships and branded content team that sits within our North American marketing organization. And what that means is my team and I look at how we can help City be present in the lives of, of consumers in the digital space. Um, how can we bring our content and our services um, to bear in a relevant way through conversation where consumers are already either uh, reading information, sharing information, and connecting, um, and how can we be part of their lives? Um, also in my portfolio is the Women & Company uh, branded set of digital properties. Uh, we have a Twitter handle, and we have a website, um, which is a city's online financial resource for women. Great. And um, I'd like to mention for those, um, hopefully you can see our screen, our um, please tweet if you are so inclined. Uh, our our uh, Twitter handles are up there, uh, Joyce M. Sullivan, Linda Descano, as well as our companies. And, uh, and also I'm, um, I'm Joyce Sullivan, uh, social media for financial services, so um, helping, uh, Linda doesn't need any help, but others who are finding their way through this uh, incredibly interesting time and highly regulated industry kind of how to go about it. So Linda, why don't we talk a little bit about, um, have you seen a big shift in how the financial industry is, is talking to consumers and, and how do you approach that? So give, give us a little insight on that. Yeah, uh, yes, absolutely. You know, I have seen a shift in how our industry is thinking about talking to consumers. I think we're beginning to see a transition from messages that are one way, that are very product centric, um, to content that is more timely, topical, uh, to the point. And in, in conversational in tone, that we're beginning to think more like publishers and producers, and less like advertisers and, and a bank, um, and more about the needs and what's relevant to the consumer versus what the message is and what's important to us. And I think that's been brought on from a couple of things. Certainly, in the aftermath of the financial crisis, um, there's been some loss of trust and. and banks and other financial institutions are looking at ways to rebuild that trust. Secondly, there's just such an appetite, um, consumers looking for tools and information to help them regain their financial footing, rebuild their, their uh, financial lives. And third, social media has made it much easier for conversations to happen around money, and most of those conversations are not happening on the websites of financial institutions. So we can either be part of those conversations, um, or we can have our messages be crowded out. Um, so for us, it's really thinking about how we can be part of those conversations in a relevant way mm -hmm. to engage, and it's very much about uh, a journey that we started 12 years ago in some aspects of our business with Women & Co, where we heard from women, don't talk to us about what you think is important or about products, talk to us about what's going on in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, give us tools to help us be even smarter than we are as the chief financial officer of our household. And so it's then when we began to listen and create content that had utility and value and that two-way street, and we're bringing that sensibility now to broader audiences and through platforms like Twitter and Facebook and trying to infuse it in all of the different touch points. So you talked about listening to uh, your audience. So I know you like to write. Um, so can you talk to a little bit about how you get inspiration uh, for some of your writings. I know you've had some interesting posts lately I've been reading. Thank you. Um, I get inspiration from the Women & Co. readers who share their ideas and comments and their personal stories with me. I get a lot of inspiration from friends and family. I'm always doing informal polls on my Facebook or LinkedIn um, to ask people what are they thinking about that, what's top of mind. 
And like probably all of you, I use LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, um, and social media to help me see what's trending. And I find, I look for a story in everything I do. I recently wrote a blog about you know, an experience I had at the Newark uh, Penn Station train station here in New Jersey, which you think about, what would you ever think about learning? But I was early for my train. I saw this woman. I thought she was homeless or disheveled, sort of weaving through the crowd. And every so often, she tapped a woman on the shoulder. And I either saw that woman smile or have a look at horror. And as she got closer to me, I heard her tap this, you know, I heard her say to this woman, do you know, miss, you're a diva. You're divine, inspired, valued, and awesome. And, you know, and then she went on her way. And she caught my eye and started headed to me. And I thought, wow, this could either go really well or I have to be scared. And she looked at me, she said, you know what, miss? I don't think I have to tell you you're a diva. You know you're a diva. And I know I'm a diva too. And we both had a chuckle. I told her she was right and she moved on. And it's just finding those inspirations, those points, being open to that. And I think it's also about me sharing my own personal journey, that this is not, sharing is a two-way street. And particularly as a big brand and a bank, you know, it can't just be all about experts in a third-party corporate voice. I think for me, the more that I can talk about my personal journey, my struggles, my challenges, and share a bit of my soul, that gives me the ability to connect with readers. And they're more willing to share their experiences with me, and that just creates a richer experience, and that, that's what really inspires me. Um, but I, I look for, for something in everything, and uh, the good news is we've had just tremendous response um, to this approach. And I, I hope all of you uh, who are following us will tweet me with some ideas. Um, she, she, she you, does listen. You too can be the inspiration <laughs> I do listen for a future blog. So you talk about listening to um, your customers, whatever, and uh, different ways to do that. So mm -hmm. you want to talk a little bit about the uh, recent launch of um, connecting Connect. with women online. There was something specific Absolutely. that just launched. So on April 30th, um, City and LinkedIn partnered to create Connect. It's a professional women's network on the LinkedIn platform. It is, um, has cr uh, curated content and moderated discussion to really facilitate conversations around networking for the women on, uh, who are members of LinkedIn. And this came out of uh, a desire and a recognition by both LinkedIn and City that there was a real interest on the part of professional women for more networking, more ideas, more inspiration, more insights, but how to take their career, their business forward, how to juggle all of the different parts of their life, and how could they find inspiration from other women. And we thought this was a unique opportunity to bring the insights and the content that we had through Cities Women & Co. with the power of the LinkedIn platform and the insights that are already there and just package them in a way that could move those conversations forward. I think what it taught us, and it's, it's only been about you know, five, six weeks, we've had over 16,000 women um, join the program. It, it, the, the richness of the, the comments and the caliber of the, the discussion has been really exciting. Um, but what's been most is that we are there, both LinkedIn and City have dedicated people who are active in the community every day. And I think that's taught us if you're going to create something like this as a brand, just don't put your name on it. For us, it was about rolling up our sleeves, listening, we're creating new content based on those conversations, but we're also there sharing um, our insights, trying to foster some of those conversations. And we found that the women in the group have really responded uh, because we're talking about things that are relevant to them and not bringing our agenda to the table, but really it's all about them. Um, and it's providing great learnings for us as we build content for all of City's other platforms. Yeah. So in our remaining time, Linda, is there anything you'd like to leave our audience with to think about whether they're in a financial firm or working with one or they have something they want to say and they're trying to reach? I think to, to Jeff's point earlier, doing uh, any type of social media in a financial firm could be quite challenging. Um, but it, the issues are not insurmountable. If you take a stepwise approach, if you understand what are some of the sensitivities, because we operate in a regulated industry, 
you know, there's always going to be concern when you're sharing content, especially in 140 characters. Is there that loss of control? Will it be distorted in the distribution and have unintended misrepresentation? But if you work collaboratively with legal teams and business teams and take a phased approach, you can really find ways, as we have found, to create original content and spark those conversations. Great. Well, Linda, thank you so much. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, you for having thank me. Thank you, everyone.